This video is for Neil deGrasse Tyson or anyone who answers the following question in the same way. Who do you think is the most extraordinary scientific mind? And here's Neil's answer. There is no contest. Isaac Newton. He was a jerk. Newton was a complete jerk. He was conniving, vain, vindictive, petty, foul-tempered, and more importantly, he tried to destroy the reputation of many scientists during his lifetime. So if you're going to say that Newton is the greatest scientific mind of all time, then you have to let us know why are you overlooking his completely unethical and morally corrupt scientific behaviors. Saying Newton is the greatest scientific mind without talking about his abhorrent scientific behavior is like saying that a certain Austrian painter is your favorite painter of all time without telling us that he is better known for other works. Working alone. This is just a myth. Newton did not work alone. He did have collaborators. He did need his collaborators. But then later, he tried to ruin their reputation. For example, that was the case with John Flamsteed, who was the royal astronomer and who Newton needed because Flamsteed had collected a lot of data about the moon that Newton needed to perfect his theory of gravitation and his theory of the moon. Newton begged Flamsteed for the data. Flamsteed finally agreed and asked Newton not to publish the data. And Newton went ahead, published the data without telling Flamsteed about it, and then insulted him and became furious with Flamsteed and eventually removed all references to Flamsteed and his data uh, instead of giving him credit for the data he needed. Discovers the law of gravity. Why do your planets orbit in this shape, ellipses? Newton, of course, was not the first one to think that the orbits of the planets were ellipses, that was Kepler, but the actual formulas of why ellipses um, have to do with gravity being reciprocal to the squares of the distance from the center, which is something that Hook, Robert Hooke, another member of the Royal Society, claimed that he had discussed with, uh, with Newton and he wanted some credit for it, or he even went as far as accusing Newton of plagiarism, which uh, Newton uh, denied very strongly. And then he went on to try to ruin Hooke's uh, career completely. And even it might be the case that after Hooke's uh, passed away, uh, then he removed the paintings of Hooke from the Royal Society. And he comes back, I finally have my answer. And he said, well, Isaac, how did you do that? Well, I had to invent integral and differential calculus to answer that question. Calculus was by no means invented by Newton alone. There is a long history of the development of integrals going back to Archimedes. A lot of other mathematicians prior to Newton had discussed the idea of uh, derivatives, for example, Descartes or Fermat. And even the fundamental theorem of calculus had a lot of predecessors, uh, for example, in the work of Wallace and Barrow. But calculus, as we know it today, was developed independently and simultaneously by Newton and Leibniz. And we have documents that prove that. But Newton would not accept that, and he has spent a lot of his career, his later years, waging a war against Leibniz and trying to destroy Leibniz's reputation, claiming that he was just plagiarizing his own ideas. And uh, Leibniz has spent a lot of time trying to convince the community of mathematicians and even the Royal Society that he had developed his ideas independently but Newton would not allow that, and he and his pawns uh, really destroyed his career. And by the end of uh, Leibniz's life, um, Newton had convinced the community that he just plagiarized uh, Newton's ideas. Uh, but that was not the case. Now we know that they both independently uh, proved or developed calculus. So anyway, Newton was a piece of work. He really was a jerk. And to really be the greatest scientific mind of all time, you have to be a great scientist. And you have to be a great scientist in the community. And he was not.